This is Med School Radio. Yes, welcome back to Med School Radio. You can hear sirens in the background, I imagine. Here they go. Okay, let's talk about lipid metabolism. Okay, we're going to talk about systemic primary carnitine deficiency, but first I'm going to read the case. An 11-month-old girl is brought to the emergency room by her parents, who report that the child has been minimally responsive for the last hour. They also state that she has not been feeding well for the last two days. Physical exam is notable for an afebrile female infant with hepatomegaly. Lab studies are notable for a blood glucose level of 45 and the presence of ketones in the urine. Upon further history, the parents report that the patient has had two other prior episodes similar to her current presentation. You treat the patient with IV dextrose and she begins to improve clinically. Given her clinical presentation, you tell the patient's parents that they may want to consider genetic testing for their daughter and she could have a disorder that affects the body's ability to transport long fatty acid chains into the mitochondria. So again, we're talking about systemic primary carnitine deficiency. The biochemical defect is an autosomal recessive disorder caused by a defect or deficiency in the OCTN2 protein, which is involved in the transportation of carnitine into mitochondria. Next, the pathophysiology. Decreased levels of intracellular carnitine result in inhibition of the carnitine shuttle, which is responsible for transporting long-chain fatty acids into the mitochondria for fatty acid oxidation. Fatty acid oxidation and energy production are impaired. Fatty acids also build up in the cytoplasm of the cell and can lead to cellular damage, particularly in the tissues of the liver, heart, and muscles. Now the clinical manifestations. Patients tend to present in infancy or early childhood with hypoketotic, hypoglycemic encephalopathy. Other symptoms include cardiomyopathy with resulting heart failure, muscle weakness, hepatomegaly or GI dysmotility. And symptoms are often triggered by viral illness or periods of fasting. The lab findings would be elevated liver transaminases, hypoglycemia, hypochromic anemia, ketones in the urine. And the treatment would be carnitine repletion, treatment of hypoketotic hypoglycemic state with dextrose infusion and avoidance of fasting. So remember systemic primary carnitine deficiency, it's autosomal recessive. And from the pathophysiology, it results in an inhibition of the carnitine shuttle. So remember that fatty acid oxidation and energy production are impaired and that it presents with hypoketotic hypoglycemic encephalopathy. Okay, thank you very much for listening to this episode and tune in again for another episode.